Hello and welcome back to your Oracle tutorial series. Now, it has been quite a while, so let me just kind of give you a refresher of what's going on on my channel. Well, I decided I'm going to make Oracle videos, MySQL videos, and SQL Server videos, and kind of turn it into a competition. And the competition starts with video 23, which is this one. <laughs> so if you like Oracle, be sure to click like and uh, watch all of these videos in this series because the winner is going to get an extra 50 tutorials. Ooh! <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. What are we going to be talking about now? Well, we are going to start talking about Oracle data types. All of the data that we store in our tables has to have a data type. Now, when we create the table, we put the data type after the column name. What is a data type though? Why do we have to put that information there? Well, put simply, just look at the name here. A data type is the type of data. Rather than just saying data, we classify it into a certain type. That way the database has a better knowledge of how to work with it, how to store it, how to optimize storage and speed and all of those things. So by having data types, we're able to improve our database. In addition to improved performance, data types also help us reject incorrect data. For example, you might have one column that has a data type and someone might try to insert some data into that that doesn't fit that data type and it will get rejected. By telling a database what type of data we want for a column, we're able to restrict garbage and keep that crap out of our database. Onyx, can you chew later? Chew. That's so gross. Now, to help us study databases, they are often categorized. You know, we always gotta make categories. <laughs> there are three main categories. There are some additional ones, but the three that I'm going to discuss with you now are the most important and the most common ones. Then the other ones are used occasionally, so we'll discuss those later. So let's start with the main three. Numeric, string, and temporal. If you are not super familiar with these words, you could say numeric is numbered data types, string is alphanumeric, which means characters and numbers, and then temporal is time spans and dates, and times. So these ones have to do with numbers, something you would do math with. String has to do with characters or a sequence of characters, so anything inside of quotes. And then anything dealing with time is temporal. Now in each one of these categories, there are some different data types. So in the upcoming videos, we're going to discuss those in more detail. But this video is kind of just to get you a, you know, a rough overview. So when we start talking about them, you're not like, what, what? An important thing to know is that each one of these is known as a character. So this is a five character string. Other examples of characters are numbers, symbols, as well as letters from other languages. So characters go inside of string data types, but numeric data types only take numbers. So these are pretty good categories, but there's one extra thing that I wanted to mention before we move on to the next video, and that has to do with storage. That's because one thing that all of the data types are going to have in common is they all take storage space. They take up space on our computer or our server, and us as database people have to figure out the best way to store these so they take up the least amount of space. I'm not going to go over all of the details on how to do that right now, but just something to kind of keep in the back of your brain is to use the amount of space that is enough to store what you need, but don't store any more than that. So for example, if you're storing a string, make the size of that string column as small as possible to store what you need. For example, if you're storing a phone number, there's no need to make the column able to store 300 characters because a phone number is only like uh, 10 to 11 characters or something like that. You'd think it wouldn't make such a huge difference because we're talking about character data. It's not huge file sizes. But when we're talking about the difference of one byte across millions of rows, the difference becomes substantial. <laughs> If you are unsure on how to size something, size it on the larger side of your unsurety. <laughs> you wouldn't want to make it too small and then later have to figure out, oh crap, how do I change this? So yeah, aim bigger than smaller if you're unsure. <laughs> That's all for this video, guys. Hopefully this next section of videos is going to be real helpful for you guys. 
Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.